Good morning guys. We are here from, as you can see by the NASA sign, the Kennedy Space Center and our Kennedy Space Center themed clothing because <laughs> we were not prepared for how no. cold it is. It was so we had to buy jackets. But we're hanging out here today. We're about to go on one of those backstage tours. Yes. I've never done that. We're super excited. So follow along. Yeah. <laughs> Hey dad, say hi to everybody. Hey everybody. everybody this is my dad. Uh, we got here a little early for our check-in to make sure we got here on time. So we got our sticker for our special interest tour and they have a little lounge we can sit in and we got free water. So we're just gonna relax and wait till it's time to go. Yay, Kay, you excited? Yeah. You look so thrilled. <laughs> but I am, cause we're getting on the bus, yes. We're getting on the bus. Our launch pad 40, where SpaceX launches from. And that is 37, where the Atlas V, where the Atlas V launches from. A nuclear type explosion, like an atomic bomb. And so we maintain a blast zone from the center of each launch pad outward, three and one half miles, five and a half kilometers, a big circle. That building, the BAP. See that building right there at the light gray trim? That is where they train to go to the moon. That's the wow. former Apollo Training Center. Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, all those guys worked out of there. Those are the high bay doors. Biggest doors in the world, 456 feet, 130 meters wow. tall. On this side of the building, we got two more high bay doors, too. We have four high bays, so you got two and two on the other side. Those are the crawler transporters right there. Those are the only two we have right there. Wow. See them? Yep. Two of them. CT1, CT2. Every moon rocket and space shuttle was carried by one of them. Okay. This big thing right here is an original mobile launch platform. That's an MLB right there. The other two are in the building. We have three of them. Two are in the building, the one is sitting right here. And if you look underneath this one, you see how it's up above ground on pedestals? Okay. You, you can see how the crawler transporter can drive underneath it and pick it up. But the big cutouts at the bottom, that's for the exhaust. They released it to SpaceX. And so they put that building right, you see that big building right there? They put that, but they just built it a couple of years ago. They put the building in the middle of the crawler way. Now, why would they do that? Because they don't need it. That's right. They don't need the crawler transporter. They don't need the BAB. They don't need the launch control center. They don't use any of that. So they were able to put this building up right here in the middle of the crawler way, and they assembled their Falcon rockets in here. So here's Kay. We're at top of the observation center, remote observation center, and there's the Atlantic Ocean. We made it to the beach. But right there that is launch bed 39a that's where every space shuttle mission launched from every astronaut launched from there and that tower is like what the space shuttle was attached to um spacex has it now that's where the falcon heavy launched from the falcon heavy that giant one we watched launched from right there oh this is so cool and then this is 39b and this is where Oh gosh, it's so windy. This is where the SLS will be launching from. We did it. That's the vehicle assembly building right there behind us. 
And the wind actually died down, so you can probably hear what I'm saying right now. Yes. This is like so exciting. They use over 600 gallons of paint just Whoa. to paint that flag. Wow. That's amazing. I love it here. So this is one of the actual arms that was used, a 39B, for the shuttle missions. So the, this is what the astronauts actually walked down. Like, this is the actual one. Oh, Neil Armstrong walked across this platform. So we just finished the tour. We landed at the Banana Creek Shuttle Launch Viewing Center. We're about to go into the Saturn V Center, and I've never been in here, so I'm very excited. This is it. This is a real Saturn V rocket. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm standing here right now. So this is the astronaut van. This is the van that the astronauts, once they got dressed up in their full spacesuit, would actually use to go from their dressing room out to the actual shuttle. I don't know if you can kind of see what it looks like inside. How far apart the chairs are spaced because they had their full suits on. You don't realize how big this is. Holy cow. It goes all the way down there. And this is it. This is an actual extra version of the lunar module. Like, it was one of these that is still, should hopefully still be sitting on the moon. It's really impressive that they cram themselves in that tiny little thing. So inside there is where the lunar module was actually stored during flight. And that right there, boom, is the pod where the three astronauts actually sat. They did their, that whole giant, this whole room is one rocket. And they sat in that tiny little spot in the very, very tippy top. So this is not the actual lunar rover that is actually still up on the moon. This is a full-scale model created from spare parts. It doesn't actually work, like you can't turn this on and drive it. This piece of, this lunar sample is from 1972, and it's estimated to be 3.7 billion years old. Wow. So in order to get the most accurate spacesuits possible, especially for the gloves, they made latex models of all their hands so they could custom size their spacesuits. So the front is Neil Armstrong's, then Buzz Aldrin's, and then in the back is Michael Collins. So this is Alan Shepard's spacesuit from the Apollo 14 mission. And as you can see, the gray dust and dirt is actual moon dust, like it's dust from the moon. And it's extremely abrasive and caused a lot of problems for them. And now we're back on the bus to head back to the main visitor complex. So we're here inside of the Atlantis building. Um, neither Kirsten or my dad have ever been in here. But this is one of the coolest reveals for an attraction I've ever seen. This is it, we're inside. And this is the, the actual space shuttle Atlantis. I mean, this went is was in space. So, so amazing. And there she is, in all her glory. I love that you can get real up close and you can see how it's like sewn together. It's so neat. Look at all the damage the silicone tiles have taken. That's crazy. And here's the underside. If you look closely, I don't know how well it'll show up, you can actually see the burn patterns of how the flames came off of it as it was, as it was re entering the Earth's atmosphere. This is probably one of the greatest quotes I've ever seen. It may have been one small step for Neil, but it's a heck of a big leap for me. And this was from Bruce McCandless, who actually went out all by himself, not tethered to the spaceship, to fly the MMU in space. That had to, I can't even imagine how terrifyingly awesome that had to be. Just to literally be alone in space like that. All right, so the shuttle does not make a straight run back into orbit. It makes a series of S turns. Woo! The third S turn, they're down to 2,540 miles an hour. The fourth S turn, they're down to 1,903. 
Then it makes the sonic boom as it re-enters. Kay, make the sonic boom. Make the sonic boom. And that's how you know it's I've re-entered the atmosphere. The twin sonic booms. And there she goes, re-entering atmosphere. Oop, she went so slow. Here goes mom. <laughs> On the bottom floor of the Atlantis building, oh, it's loud in here, there is a ton of little interactive games that cover all different parts of a space mission. So much fun. To start, so it looks like Kay's gonna be working with the robotic arm. All right, she's doing the wing edge inspection. She'll have three minutes to successfully complete it. All right, so here's the actual, like, the window so you can see what she's doing. And this is what it's telling her what to do. She needs to go up. There we go, now she... Pick up the bait. Job the all right, now she's gonna practice landing this bait. Oh man, you are all over the place. What are you doing? Oh, you're about to stall out. Keep the nose pointed down. Down, angle down. There you go. All right, so she will never pile. Oh lord, she's struggling. The struggle is real. There, you're doing better this time. Oh, oh, no, nope, you're overcompensating. Take your time. Go right a little bit. Go up. Go up. Go up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this is absolutely adorable. It's called Just Add a Kid. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. So right here, outside of the journey to Mars, they have a mock-up of what the Orion's going to look like, which is the new deep space vehicle that the astronauts will travel in to Mars. So Kay just pointed something out that none of us noticed earlier. The entrance to the bus tour is a mini recreation of the vehicle assembly building, a much sparklier version of the vehicle assembly building. They also have a large covered outdoor playground for kids, which is pretty cool. So here in the rocket garden, they have samples of a lot of the different rockets they used throughout the years. And it's just, you feel very small standing under these. These are pretty wild. Alright, well that'll do it for us here at uh, NASA Kennedy Space Center. Uh, we've been here since 10 a.m. It's now 4.30 and we still only did about half of the visitor center. So we're definitely going to have to come back another day and do the rest. But as usual guys, thank you so much for following along on our adventures. If you keep liking it, hit that subscribe button. And have a good day guys. Bye!